All right, so we're back. New videos of the goal breakdowns for the 2024 season. This goal is courtesy of Chicago Fire's Brian Gutierrez, who is highlighted here on your screen. You'll see just Chicago move the ball here really well. Nothing too dangerous, just players running into space. Blocked there by Jose Martinez, and Jose Martinez is going to give the ball away here poorly, tries to find Julian Carranza, and then Chicago looks to go against the run of play. Good hold-up play there by Shakiri on Jose Martinez. We're going to track the run, the movement here by Brian Gutierrez, who you can see is out wide, not really causing any danger here. And as soon as he collects the ball right here, there's just a really poor challenge by Jose Martinez. You can see both Nate Harrell and Jacob Glesnes. As soon as Jose Martinez misses his tackle to get the ball back, they realize that this is danger. Both players step up on the ball. By the time they step up, it's too late. And that's a clean hit by Brian Gutierrez to put Chicago up 1-0. And, and, and two things here by Jose Martinez. Not really a ton of pressure there by Chicago to get the ball off of his foot. In that situation, he didn't really have any other options. And it's like, just boot the ball upfield. Julian Carranza was marked well when he tried to play the pass in. And then the tackle on Brian Gutierrez was poor. And by the time that both defenders, Jacob Glesnes and Nate Harrier, realized this, it was too late. And could Oliver Semla have done better? I do believe so, and some fans said, you know, if this was Andre Blake, does he does he save this? And we'll actually go and get a behind-the-goal angle to see. Right here, when this ball's hit, you're going to see a delay in Semla. Right there, he, he reads it late, he sees it late. I'm not sure what. It's, it's a good hit, but you do wonder, if Andre Blake's in goal, does he react quicker to what Oliver Semla did? And his first start with the Philadelphia Union, the former Marshall University Louisville FC goalkeeper in net for Blake. All right, so this is the second goal of the match. This one comes courtesy of Mikel Uwa to put the Union on board 1-1 in the second half of the game, which I noticed going back watching this game. For whatever reason, the scoreboard wasn't up on the left-hand side of your screen, so if you weren't watching this game... You would have no idea when this goal came, but uh, you can see the Union in possession of the ball right here. Damian Lowe is going to go ahead and just find Nate Harriel out wide right. And this is going to be really good combination play between Quinn Sullivan and Nate Harriel. And this is something that we saw a lot of in the second half. These two players for the Union causing a lot of issues on the left-hand side of the field for Chicago Fire. And the left back, Chase Gaspar, came in around the fifth minute for Chicago in the first half because Andrew Gutman left the field with an injury. And so you have a backup left back on the field and the union took advantage of that pretty much as soon as Andrew Gutman was out of the field. Nice pass by Nate into Quinn. Quinn finds Nate Harrell. But I just want to track the run here by Quinn Sullivan real quick. This is such a smart, clever run by Quinn Sullivan. He's going to make the underlapping run. Nate Harrell is going to find the pass to Daniel Gazdag, which then pulls Chihos out of position to go and man mark Daniel Gazdag. And so Daniel Gazdag's able to see the run of Quinn Sullivan. He's already ahead of Brian Gutierrez. And just a really good play here. Good pass in. Quinn lifts his head, and there's a goal for Mikel Uwe right through the legs of Chris Brady. But, but this is perfect for the Union. Jim Curtin said after the game, we didn't want to make a substitution on the right-hand side because of all the issues that Nate Harrier and Quinn Sullivan were causing. And there's no better example of that than this goal right here between multiple players involved. Gazdag, Harrier, Sullivan. Is he offside? Is he offsides? And Pineda keeps Quinn Sullivan on. And you're just going to go see Mikhail Uwa get in behind up Pineda, loses him for a quick second, and that's all it takes is just a split second of not knowing where the attacker is. And Quinn Sullivan's able to pick out the easy pass, and Mikhail Uwa is able to go through the legs of the goalkeeper. This is not a hard finish at all, but th this is what you expect strikers to do, and Mikhail Uwa is off and running for the 2024 season. All right, so this one 
is the third goal in the game. This one comes courtesy of Fabian Herbers, the former Philadelphia Union player. Uh, this goal comes from basically nothing, just a little scrappy goal. The Union pretty much dominating the whole second half of the game, and Chicago is able to get the second lead of this match. A lot of good combination play we'll see here in the second between Acosta, Holly Selassie, Brian Gutierrez. Chicago does a good job just to move this ball to find the space. And we'll see Fabian Herbert is right there highlighted. He's going to just get this scrappy goal. Really not in this play whatsoever because all the pressure is coming on the Union's left-hand side of the defense. Again, good combination play between Holly Selassie. Nice little give and go right here. And just the movements, really, really good. Gutierrez finds Holly Selassie. Semla has to do a better job holding onto that ball. Puts it out into pressure, and the Union try to clear the ball, but they can't. It's scrappy. Fabian Herber is celebrating 2-1, and like I said, I mean, pretty much, the Union dominated the second half of this game. In Chicago Fire, they stayed patient. They stayed compact. They didn't bend, and they get their second lead in this game. We know it doesn't last, but... Nervy moments there for the Union defensively. Just good combination of play we see right there. The run, Kai Wagner steps out of position there, and so it's good awareness by Holly Selassie to attack that space. Damian Lowe keeps Fabian Herbers on side here. No questions. Is this offsides? Is, this, is it not? It's, it's an easy finish there. Nothing the Union could have done to get that ball out. I mean, it, it starts with putting the ball out into a dangerous area, not being able to clear the ball away, and Chicago Fire are first to react, and they get the 2-1 lead. All right, so this is the fourth and final goal of the match. This one comes courtesy of Daniel Gazdag to tie this game up in stoppage time in the second half at two apiece. And just like the first goal for the Union, they cause a whole bunch of issues for Chicago on the left-hand side of their defense. Union taking advantage of this throughout the whole game ever since... Andrew Gutman went out. Union do a good job here not to turn this ball over. Very congested here, as you can see on the right-hand side of the field. Quinn Sullivan's going to find Jacob Glesnes. And so many times we see the Union over the years just struggle when teams are sitting deep, parking the bus when they have the lead. But the Union do a really good job here to break down Chicago. A couple things I want to point out, though, on this play. And so we had Chase Gaspar come in for Andrew Gutman in the fifth minute. Chase Gaspar is now out of the game. Another left back's on the field for Chicago and Jonathan Dean. And so Jose Martinez is going to go ahead and decoy for this ball. And then he's going to make a run underneath of Dean. But Dory is then going to be able to run into this space. The two defenders are man-marking both Julian Kranza and Daniel Gazlag, leaving Mikhail Ua wide open on the back post. Not well defended at all by Chicago. This outside of the boot pass by Quinn Sullivan's excellent. And Jose Martinez with a spectacular ball into Daniel Gazdog. And who's at fault for this goal for Chicago? Just like the first goal for Chicago, none other than Pineda. Not a great showing for him in this game whatsoever. Not a great showing for the left-hand side of Chicago's defense, and the Union, to their credit, they realize where the weak spot was for Chicago. They take advantage of that. It's good movement, and that, that's something that's not going to show up on the stat sheet, is the movement by so many players in this game for the Union. And to their credit, you know, a couple goals ruled off for offsides, and that didn't stop them for getting the equalizer late in this game to tie it at two apiece. Alright, and so like we always do, we show a couple extra plays after we show the goals, and there was chaos here. In the 95th minute, both teams with a chance to win it late on. Union have a chance, back post with Mikel Ua, smacks his ball right off the crossbar. Ali Bedoya just miss kicks this, and now you're going to see a little mini counterattack here by Chicago, not putting too many men for it, but here goes Tom Barlow in between Quinn Sullivan and Damian Lowe. Good touch there, good acceleration, missed tackle, and a huge save there by Oliver Semla. Let's go ahead and just rewatch that whole thing again. We talked about Jonathan Dean coming in not good whatsoever against Jose Martinez. He's the one who lets 
Mikhail Uwa have a free shot there towards goal. And then just a run right here by Tom Barlow. It's a good run in behind. Bad tackle behind Damian Lowen. I, I just want to see that chance by Tom Barlow once again. It's, it's a good touch, and he had a chance right here to chip that ball. He should have chipped Oliver Semla right here. So far out of his goal, but Semla makes himself big, comes up with the save to preserve a point for the Union. Like I said, both teams with a chance to win this later one.